Compound lifts before isolation lifts are the best, except when they're not. Ooh, right, let's talk about it. I like that. I like that. I, uh, I knew you'd I, like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe because it's my idea. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, before we went live, we were just talking about how Sal is so hard. You could, I tried to tell him to say something a certain way and no, never fails. Let's forget. He'll do it his own way, no matter how good I say something. It's got to so be that, in your words. Like, it's got to be his way. It worked. <laughs> no, so the, the rule the, the rule that, and, and you know, rules in strength training are general rules because most rules uh, can be broken uh, depending on the Would context. you say that? Would you say that? That's true. Um, mostly. As you say, yeah, there's most things. M almost every rule, which is why, too, I, I get so frustrated with social media sometimes when we speak in absolutes yeah. and then we battle each other, you know, fitness yeah. professionals talking shit about another fitness professional because yeah. they're communicating so this. Much nuance they're and then somebody the comes table. to the top and says, This is what the study says. It says, Well, Okay, yeah, in that in that controlled environment, in that in that study, in that situation, this that, that is the truth. But there's also situations where I know that's not the truth, and so it's so much more nuanced than that. Yes, and, it and, is, and it's a good general rule to program compound lifts first, right? To com and 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 not only that, but the the muscle or the area you want to work should be prioritized that way. So the the things that can give you the biggest bang for your buck, compound lifts, the muscles that you're trying to focus on first, but there's exceptions to that. And in fact, there's a lot of clients that I would train and we would start with an isolation exercise first. Yeah, same here. Um, and of course, you know, you have the most energy, so you should do the heaviest lifts, et cetera, et cetera. But if I had a client mm. that had trouble connecting to and feeling a target muscle on a compound lift, yeah, because compound lifts use you know, two joints and they use lots of different muscles for the lift, right? Like a bench press. It's uh, known to be a chest exercise, but it's also using the shoulders and triceps, right? Um, a squat. Squat uh, was a big one for me. Yes. Getting the glutes to fire and be engaged while going through that compound lift. That's right. right. So a lot of a lot of women will do squats for their glutes, right? But you're also using your quads and, and your hamstrings and even your calves to some degree. Yep. What if I don't feel the target muscle when I'm doing the compound lift? Well, one of the best things you could do is isolate that muscle for a few sets and then go to the compound lift. Now, there are going to be people who are going to bring up studies and show that, oh, this doesn't change how many muscle fibers you activate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I disagree completely. And it's not because it's telling your muscles to work differently necessarily. It's just allowing you to feel the muscle that you're trying to work. And then you adjust that technique just enough to be able to do it. Because I noticed when, when I have mm -hmm. clients, for example, if I have female clients that didn't feel their butt when they did squats, and then I had them do some hip bridging or some hip thrusting and then squat, I would notice a difference in their technique. They would use more glutes in the squat because now they felt it from the previous so it's no, exercise. It's no different yeah. than if you were to run a study that showed that when people are doing a seated row and I poke them in the back, I activate more muscles or not. Like I don't activate more muscles when I poke them in the back. I just feel it. But they feel it more and they have a better understanding of where they should feel That's it. Right. And it allows them it's to get a better. signal for them, yeah, to respond right. to. So it's yeah. very similar to that. It's not, okay, you're right. In a controlled study, you are not going to show that this builds more muscle doing it this way. Therefore, why should we throw it out? No, it's like, you are teaching, like I, you use the chest, uh, very, very common. Um, I'd say those are the probably two biggest that where I'd use in isolation. Uh, many, many times if I had a client that wanted to develop their chest and they never felt bench press in their chest, mm -hmm. I would lay them on a foam roll on their down their spine and we would do like a fly, right? And I did that because I, the way laying on the foam roll would drop their scapula back like they need to be in that position and doing an isolation full fly. Full range of motion. Yeah, full range of motion real deep. They would, re it, for, it's so hard not to fill your chest in a fly like exactly. that. Exactly. It's like and, a cheat code for that. Yeah. And so now I'm getting them to feel that. And it's like, okay, just like a hip thrust is really hard not to feel your glutes. And so if you get them to feel that and, they, and then it clicks like, oh, okay, that's what I should feel in the movement. Now let me think about that when I go into this squat or this bench press. Uh, made all the difference. It all does. And and now if they here's how they should do a study like that. Like let's take 50 people who say they don't feel their chest in a bench press or say they don't feel their glutes in a squat, then have them do this. And then I think what you're going to find mm -hmm. is they're able to connect better and activate those muscles a little bit better. I, I learned this. I was lucky enough to learn this as a kid. Um, I learned this as a kid because one of the, one of the first, you know, written out programs that I followed was a program called heavy duty by Mike Menser. Now, this is a, the theory of the program is like low volume, high intensity, et cetera, et cetera. But the, he used what are called pre-exhaust supersets 
in that program. Uh, and the reason why I use them is because you're doing one set per body part. His theory was you want to pre-exhaust the target muscle with an isolation exercise and then go right to the compound lift. So you fully, you get that muscle to go to full failure or whatever. But anyway, you can debate that and argue that. That wasn't the point. The point is when I did that for my back, Matt, now consider I was probably 16 years old, 15 or 16 years old. And I'd been training my back since I was 14, and I'd never gotten a pump on my lats. Never. Never happened. Every time I did my back, I'd kind of feel it, but I didn't get a pump. My arms would get pumped, but I never really felt my lats. Well, I did dumbbell pullovers, and then I supersetted that with pull-ups. So I, I did an isolation <laughs> lift, and then did pull-ups. And I'll, I'll never forget that. I stood up. I, dro I dropped down from the pull-ups. I went down. But five seconds later, I, for the first time ever, felt a pump in my lats. And that's yeah. when I realized, like, Oh, it's because I isolated them first. And I use this on clients all the time. Anytime somebody didn't feel a particular muscle, I would isolate the muscle first, go back to the compound lift, and then they knew what to do. Like, oh, I know where I need to feel this. I know what I need to do with my technique and form. And it would change ever so slightly to hit those target muscles. And, and so this is really effective for people that have trouble connecting to muscles and compound lifts. Well, this may be a little more on the functional side and less on like trying to maximize muscle pump or um, muscle build development. Like, so if somebody doesn't feel their core, doesn't feel the engagement there and the bracing mechanism, you know, if I'm not working on that specifically and highlighting that first before I go into a compound lift, like a back loaded squat, yeah. <laughs> you know, then we're going to have problems and people do that all the time where they're just getting into the movement of it and they're not maximizing their stability. They're not maximizing, you know, their, their mechanics with that because they're not properly set up because you need that muscular contraction to really, you know, protect the spine to, to give them, you know, the, the best performance they could achieve. By the, by the way, studies that support what we're talking about look different. Uh, there are studies where people will do a curl with one arm and then they'll do the curl with another arm. But when they do the curl with the other arm, they think about the bicep contracting and relaxing. They're like focusing on it mentally. And the studies show more muscle fiber activation when they concentrate on the target muscle. You squeeze out like 10% more. Yeah, and what we're trying to do here with the, the isolation exercise first is allow you to feel that muscle. That's it. So now mm -hmm. when I go do my squats, my glutes are already a little fatigued. I can feel them while I'm walking. Like, oh, there they are. Now when I do my squat, I know what to do yeah. in my squat to make it you hit my glutes. You can make micro adjustments too if you have that connection. That's it, 100%. I mean, I think this was a a solid trainer technique that at one point, if you've been doing this long enough, you, you figure out, you have to you figure it out on your own. Yeah. And then it's a, then it's a go-to. I mean, I, I actually think that if I were to go back, knowing that the rule of compound lifts, knowing how we write programs are like that way, right? You'll always see one of our mass programs leads with a compound lift. Right. But when I think about the clients that I've trained many times, uh, I probably, if not more times, started with isolation because a lot of clients have a really mm -hmm. hard time uh, feeling that. At least maybe I like maybe if it was chest, maybe I still started with barbell back squats. But then when I got to chest, I would do an isolation exercise first to get them to be able to feel yeah. it. If they gave me feedback of, I don't feel this in my chest. Like, yeah. oh, great. Here, come here. It's, here, al it's also it. good for correctional exercise. Uh, physical therapists will do this where somebody will do an overhead press, for example, and they'll say, oh, it hurts my shoulder. And then what a physical therapist will do is, let's say they'll do some kind of rotator cuff exercise. They'll, they'll, they'll train the infraspinatus or the supraspinatus. So they'll do something like that, right? And they'll do it, you know, let's say external rotation. Then they'll have them do the shoulder press and the person's like, the pain is gone. Well, what just happened? All they did, I mean, technically they fatigued the stabilizer muscle a little bit, but how come they don't feel pain anymore? Because they activated it. And now they changed their form ever so slightly. So I would also do this with correctional exercise. I would do this with abduction, right? Being the legs out, adduction, bringing the knees in. I would do this with the ankles. When somebody would notice pain somewhere, a little correctional exercise, which oftentimes correctional exercise resembles isolation movements more than compound lifts. Oftentimes, not always. I would do that first. Then they go do the lift and like, oh, I don't hurt anymore. What did you just do? I just, I just got you to feel what you need to feel. I got you to move the way I want you to move. But I, so all we're doing right now is we're explaining what's happening. You don't need to know all this. If you do bench press, if you do rows, if you do overhead presses, you do squats, and you're one of those people, which is like 20%, I would say, 20% of people, especially when you first get started, 
don't feel necessarily the target muscle. Like 20% of people will do back exercises and they'll feel it in their biceps. 20% of people will do chest exercise and they'll feel it in their shoulders and triceps. Or they'll do, you know, butt exercises and it's all in their quads. Try and isolate, try a few sets of, an, of, of hitting that target muscle isolation style, then go to the compound lift, slow down your reps, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you'll be able to feel it. All of a sudden, you'll have the right form. I mean, yeah. talking about correctional stuff too, I mean, here's an example of, of something I do every single time before I overhead press or before I chest press, I will go over and do suspension trainer W's first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and and it seems counterproductive. Like, oh, you're going to go fatigue yourself doing this, you know, shoulder uh, exercise. Face pulls. Yeah, or face pulls. Yeah. Like, th those are also great for that. Technically, you're fatiguing the stabilizers. Yeah. yeah it makes you stronger. Yes, but then uh, exactly. Watch what happens. I have a way better bench press going in there because I'm moving more optimally. And so, there's this is where there's exceptions to the rule. Like that is not the best way technically to get a bigger bench press, and no study is going to show that that does that. But it's like if you are anything like me, where you have forward shoulder rounded and round rounded shoulders and forward head, getting you in a more optimal position to go bench press is going to result in a better bench press and better results from your bench press. This, so this is where the exception to the rule. This is. is all about central nervous system training that's what you're doing when you're doing that is you're you're teaching the central nervous system in a very short period of time it takes a couple sets sometimes one set to tell your central nervous system here's a more optimal way to fire and use the muscles and so what you end up finding is by fatiguing a stabilizer muscle technically you're stronger how does that even make sense because the cns now is firing in a more optimal way and again, physical therapists do this all the time. You'll see, you can find videos on, even on social media where somebody isn't able to bring their arm all the way back and a PT will go do a bunch of shoulder exercise and all of a sudden they can bring their arm all the way back. Like what is going on? Yeah. It's all about the CNS. It's yeah, yeah. all about the CNS. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food and struggling? You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around, pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. You guys uh, seeing all the buzz around the Park City giveaway entries and stuff like that? Are they going crazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's pretty exciting. Brett was telling me he's getting all kinds of feedback from it already too. So it's off and running and it's going good. And so- Dude, the, 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 the perfect day there. First of all, it's a great location. If you like skiing- uh, it is one of the best places yeah. in the world. What a great us. excuse to get a nice vacation. Yes. So, but here's what I like. I, this is what I like to do when I go there, right? Wake up in the morning. I work out in the morning. I'll go do one to two minutes in the cold dip and mm -hmm. then lift. You get the gym right next to it. Then I'll finish with the sauna. Then I'll go do some red light therapy. And then at night you got the sleep system. You're like, you're going to be optimized. Yeah, be I'm, I'm more like uh, hit the hot tub and then watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, I, that's Sal's routine there. I'm like, yeah, yeah you'll catch me in the hot tub, uh, checking uh, out the views, and then I'll be watching a movie in the movie I got theater. the whole family to do the uh, cold plunge of the morning. It, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, was, that's right. It was crazy. Who won? Uh, well, probably Everett. You. He did? Yeah. He's... Honestly, dude, I felt like that was colder than just adding ice to a bath. Like the the temperature of it, it was like, oh my god, this is brutal. Oh, oh it can it can get colder. I know it can. I don't know what the exact temperature of what a bath gets when you add co uh, ice cubes to it. Yeah, but the the cold plunge can dip colder. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Set I at, felt it because I I mean I could have. I think I was just like you know, it, it, it's it's a competitive thing, and I wasn't being competitive. I was just oh, okay, I'm good. And then <laughs> ever gets in there. He's like, <laughs> no, he's a super competitive. Yeah, I was man. like, all right, go for that it. That kid cracks you up. We have movie posters, right? In the I, I remember in the theater. Yeah, they represent all of that us. we all represent. Yeah, Which yeah. one was mine? Rocky? Is it Rocky? Rocky? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're the Rocky. Rocky yeah. one there. There's a Goonies Which one, one in there. Goonies. There was uh what was I? I don't remember what mine was. Few Day, Good Men? Days of Thunder. A few few good men. You're right. Few good men. Yeah, yeah. What's Doug's? Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah, Top was, Gun. It wasn't a Charlie Chaplin. It wasn't, it wasn't a talkie. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin, yeah. And then there was yeah. Star Wars. That's right. Star yeah. Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's so great. Don't we have so, uh, the Usual Suspects as well? Yeah, oh, that's, that's it. what it was. I mean, Usual Suspects and Few Good Men are like it's two funny. of I never my I've never seen movies. that. You've never seen Usual Suspects? I've also never seen A Few Good Men. Bro, oh! that, that was my nickname in college, dude. Bro, Kaiser. Those are like two of my all-time favorite movies. Never saw them. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. They're both those great. Those are just good. Those no, are no, two of my all-time favorite movies. Legendary. I know. Yeah. I know. You talk about them all the time. I <laughs> wow. I did not know you've never seen no, them. I almost put Memento. Bro, put that on your list. That's like a great 
Friday, Saturday. You know what it is? Can well, yeah, what you is it? Because I'm telling you. The this cover? Why, fucking guy. No, that's not exactly why. Remember how long, like it, how, we started remember the show? how long it took him to watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I still Game didn't watch the whole thing. I still mm. watch. You know what it is? Lame. Yeah, yeah, let me no, hear no, let me tell you. It has nothing to do with the fact that you like it okay. at all. Yeah. Because that, that movie was Pretty popular sure forever, way before I knew you. That was the 90s, right? Yeah, it's been around for a long time. It's the, it's the, it it was, this is, I'm going to date myself. You go to Blockbuster and you get the box. <laughs> and the picture on the box doesn't it, it does what is it? It's a couple guys in suits or well, well, yeah, right. not exciting. Throw it away. <laughs> I mean, exploding. Quentin Tarantino, yeah. like all his like covers look like that too. So how how do you yeah, I mean, I That's weird logic. Him. Yeah, I didn't say anything. Really I'm just telling that you. is the weirdest logic <laughs> I've ever you. heard because the because the blockbuster cover of the movie. So I and, pull and, up the movie poster. Hey, forget There's that, nothing exciting hey, about it. Hey, forget it. It got like 99 on Rotten Tomatoes, and people have been talking about it for decades. They have. It's like it's like it's got a terrible. It's so long. Now, 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 I don't even want to go. You know what I mean? It's so long now. Like, oh, it's so to. good. Like, uh, you first of all, usual suspects. There's nothing. That's like the it. one. Is no, that it's, that's it's the so one where unique. he says you can't handle the truth, right? No, 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 that's, no, that's, that's a few, few good, good men. men. Which is a good. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, okay, oh, cool. It's like a military is American flag. <laughs> I don't think I've know. ever picked a movie that's based off of the cover. I'm just telling you. I know it's. I know it's illogical. I'm just telling you right now. It doesn't sell me. Oh yeah. Pull up usual suspects. That one's not going to sell you either. I mean, I'm trying to show me a cover that sells you. I want to know what is what. Well, cut. so Rocky, I had to watch because he's, he's got Italian. Blood, Same thing with Godfather. They're both he's like, like critter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a predator. I mean, on Usual it, Suspects yeah. looks interesting, doesn't that? No. No. no they're all in a lineup. No. That, looks, no. that looks. I don't it's know. It's not. Uh, it's no, like a lineup no. of that, guys. That, you know, movie, hey, that movie is so good that I can tell you, you'll watch it. You will not get the twist in it. I'm telling you, there's a twist in it. You yeah. won't get okay, it. Look at that. That's why. That's what gets his attention. Force. Look at Predator. It's got to be on, muscles. Uh, right uh, away. Uh, I want to watch that right now, bro. You're like 12. <laughs> you're like 12 still. It's <laughs> usually like an action hero. <laughs> hey, when I was a kid, you know what I used to do when I go to Blockbuster? I go in the horror section. Yeah. And just look at the boxes. I did too. Because they were. Well, there was one movie that 80s was so gore was my favorite. Me too. Yeah. They did went crazy with that. I, insane. That's all they. There was one movie where well, like like tomato soup that just yeah there was a okay so there was a whole series of movies so Gremlins came out that was popular in yeah. the eighties which yeah, by yeah. the way don't show your kids if you got kids and you're my age <sighs> most eighties movies I've learned they really scary bro yeah, I scarring. showed my kids when they were too young the and remember when they microwaves the Gremlin yeah, explodes in there yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah my kids had nightmares though, so <laughs> uh, there was a, there was a, a whole slew of movies that followed with little monsters that were that big and there were different names for them uh, yeah. There was one where he's like coming out of the toilet. Do you remember that? Oh, one? yeah. I remember what that is that? One. I don't know. But I mean, the critter was one of them. Critters sure. was one of yeah. them. And then there was another one where he's like, I can't remember the name. Yeah, I don't remember the names. But I, I was definitely. Oh. He's like in a toilet. Remember that? Like face. Remember that clown <laughs> like a uh, 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 clowns from space. Um, yes, the taste. You guys' taste in movie is so it was, suspect, bro. Bro, look hilarious. at look at Crit look Critters movie uh, poster. Watch this, bro. Oh, I think I remember. I think it I wasn't remember. Critters. It wasn't Critters oh, in the. There it is. Oh, it was right Critters. Right there, right there. Ghoulies. It, ghoulies. There oh, you ghoulies. go. Ghoulies. I yeah, forgot yeah. about Ghoulies. I remember. I watched it. And I was a kid, right? You know how terrifying it is to have a monster in the toilet when yeah, you're a kid. Of course. Look at that. Terrifies yeah. me now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I cannot believe you, you, bro. They're, those are such killer clowns from outer space. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 You can't, Great you one. can't watch <laughs> either a few good men or Usual Suspects and not like it. I just, uh, I don't know anybody who, I don't know anybody who has watched that. And says, you know, it's one of my favorite. It, it may not be your favorite movie, like it's one of mine. But now, do you guys have a favorite movie that's embarrassing? Like if you say it, you're like, uh, well, rad. It's really good. Uh, what rad? Oh yeah. Remember what my that's poster? Not, that's not embarrassing. I mean, it's kind of no. That's like a total kid movie for dudes. Like, I, there's no embarrassing movie. Oh, I got one for you. Uh, I got one. Well, uh, oh uh, Devil Wears Parada. That's one of your favorite movies. I like Wears that movie Prada. a lot. That is so that's embarrassing, right? You. Wow. That's, that's so you. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why is that so me, bro? Because you probably think you love Fashion. her. <laughs> <laughs> you love that character. Fashion. It's a good movie. Yeah, see, I do. It's a good movie. It's a good she's movie. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like a badass yeah. boss. And she yeah, she probably, it's, a, it's a good movie. Yeah. I, you've seen that, right, Doug? I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Like, I thought it was good. Legally I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a chick yeah. movie, and there I like are, it. Yeah, there's a few of them that are pretty good. What's, yeah, I'd, I, say, I'd say that's probably the most- You know what I like? I, that I'm most embarrassed to admit that I would. you can I'll, get me to rewatch I'll tell that, you right? one that's worse than that. I watched okay. this movie several times. really good. It's a, it's a love story. Chocolat. Have you seen that? Oh, that's no. a good one, actually. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Johnny Depp, right? That's like the notebook. I've never sat through either one of those. I'll never watch that. 
Yeah, I don't do a lot of those. No, no, no. That was actually a decent movie. I watched uh, Dirty Dancing for the first time when I started dating Jessica. Oh, that's good. She was, yeah. no, it wasn't. She was conv convinced me it would be good, and I watched it. I'm like, it was, it's not it good. Wasn't bad. It was good. For no, it's not. For most of 80s movies. Can't, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, you can't com compare, like. Yeah, like I, like Breakfast Club, but that's not embarrassing. No, I'll Breakfast Club. Oh, that's, that's a classic. Yeah, dude. Like, that's uh, not embarrassing. Uh, All the other stuff you watch is embarrassing. A lot, yeah, a lot of those. <laughs> I do a lot of, like, really you, you bad. You and Sal just list I used to like watching. You see. Yeah, I used to like watching really bad movies, though, because, you know, then you could just throw popcorn at it and talk yeah, shit the yeah. whole time. I it's never fun. watched uh what's that one with the transvestites from space? Oh yeah. What? Uh you know, dude, as soon as I say it, you're gonna know. It's it, it Rocky Horror a, Picture Rocky Show. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh I've never I've seen actually, I've never seen that Okay, either. that's an embarrassing one. I went to I knew you did, a see? showing <laughs> of, course of Rocky Horror it, and it was downtown Santa Cruz and everybody's all dressed up and drag and all this weird stuff yeah. and I was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. what did I just say? But it was fun. Everybody's like, you know, really getting into it. And they'll, it, say, trash. they'll say the lines and stuff. Yeah. You know which one movie that is, I right? I don't. I don't. Look it up, Doug. So can it's like that. a musical. Rocky Horror Film? Horror Rocky Picture, Horror Show. Picture Show. It's a cult I feel, classic. I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever I know I have watched it. See, See that, I remember the song. Is. It's what's his name? What is his name? Dude, I love that you pick apart covers and that you actually chose that cover over <laughs> yeah. like Tim you grab that cover at blockbuster <laughs> and you're like this few good men looks like terrible wow. i'm gonna watch this one i never yeah this I, one's appealing no yeah. i didn't yeah, see yeah, this one right Justin, up my alley right right. Right. those fishnet stockings yeah <laughs> a dude wearing fit yeah bro like okay explain the logic behind that, yeah. that cover for me, bro. I, never, I never watched it i never watched uh, it but okay. i know it was a cult classic okay, you never see that and one. i brought it up because i knew justin watched it <laughs> Damn it! I, I, dude, I You're having, right. I was having a conversation with my my son. He's like super into like, which is cool. He likes learning like science stuff and whatever. We That's have a cool. book on the brain. We have a book on reading about dinosaurs, carnivorous plants. You guys know that. So today he was uh, this morning. In fact, before I came here, I'm reading him a book. And you know, little kids have no concept of like time. Yeah. Right, like yeah. to them, a long time. They don't know, right? Yeah, a day is a long time for them. They just don't know, right? Yeah. So he's talking to me. I'm just, hey, I was cracking up. He goes, Papa. He goes, dinosaurs, they existed a long time ago. I said, yeah. And he goes, more than fifty thousand weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I guess so. Bro. You're right. <laughs> fifty thousand weeks ago yeah. is a lot. Yeah, right. I, know, I like. I like technically when, when Max does stuff like that. Oh my god! Right now he is like. Super. When he's sick, man, he is uh, not attached to his mom. Overly sensitive. You cannot joke with him. You can't do anything. Can you get this feeling, sir? Oh, dude, Katrina. So <laughs> last night, so so he's, you just do you mess he's with on him a he's bit? on the mint. No, I know better. Like I like I just the, I leave the two of them. Like literally, I don't. When Max is sick, I don't see Katrina and, and them for like days. Like they literally <laughs> just just so they stay on their side of the house. They just he's attached <laughs> her. She can't even go to the bathroom without him going. Like, where are you going? Yeah. You, bring me with you she's like oh my god I can't no even. oh yeah he's like that dude it's cr it's crazy so she uh he's starting to feel better and she's talking to him and he goes mommy what happens if you get sick and then she goes well then you're gonna have to take care of me he goes he just starts crying. What? Like, no. And she goes, I'm, honey, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not a funny joke. No. <laughs> just, uh, the next 10 minutes, he's crying. No over yeah. It's just like, you, you, can't, can't, you can't fuck with him, dude. You can't. Right? Uh, At that time, he's so Does he follow, Has he ever followed you to the bathroom? Does he ever do that? Oh, he's, I mean, when he's healthy, he does that. When we, we went through a phase, I don't know if you went through this at all, but I, and you guys remember, I talked about this on the podcast. There was a time when, uh, I want to say when he was about, one and a half till three where he was i couldn't there was actually a period of time for probably even a little less than that maybe a year where i couldn't leave his site if i left the room just glued to you yeah he so he had to go with me and i literally had to carry if i went to the bathroom i'm holding him going to the bathroom i would like if i was home and yeah. daddy was home he had to be wherever i was at it did not matter my, where I was. so my son will do this in the morning like i'm gonna go to the bathroom i'm coming with you well i, I mean i had to go i had to go number two so i said okay <laughs> I brought him in. He don't yeah, come to the bathroom the no more. <laughs> oh, that's really? it. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was the last oh, time. You're, you're, you're going to hear the fireworks. <laughs> no, he's sitting there, and we're just talking. He's like, "Tell me a story." So I'm telling a story, and he starts to make a face. He's like, <laughs> he's like "I don't want to. I don't want to be in here anymore." I'm like, you want to? You got to. You wanted to be in here, bro. Now you got to stay in here, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to go get some matches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then my my what my almost two year old daughter. Mm -hmm. 
when I go pee, I don't want her in there anymore because I would go pee and she would chill. But now she looks. She looks up like, huh? And I'm like, all right. Okay. Yeah. You're going to get to the age where we remember Too this. Too much so investigating. You got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> more. No more. You don't no need more. to check I don't want no memories. Wizard you know I mean? sleeve uh, anymore. Yeah. You know, we, we, created, we created a monster. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you see wizard sleeve? <laughs> That's, I'm not, that's, that's not me, bro. That's, yeah. not, that's not me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, European Catholic. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. All right. You never know. No. You never know. <laughs> you I didn't check. You know, I didn't check. No, you didn't check. <laughs> no. Just so, assuming. Wizard. So we're we're trying to backpedal right now uh, because I think I told you guys this too. Uh, on the show that one of the things I love that he does is he's definitely a negotiator, but he negotiates everything now. And oh. so I, I hear Katrina in the other Let room. Let him have it though. Yeah. Huh? I, that's how I feel, yeah. man. I'm like, it's a good skill. I like that skill. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so it's very good. Skill. I, so long as we go back and forth and, and he's, and he is open. Like, it's not just, he, it's not like he tries to negotiate and then cries. He doesn't get his way. It's like, he'll keep going. You can keep going with him. Like, wow. Okay. If we do that, then you only get one book. And if we do that, then we have to, tomorrow we have to do this. Like you could go back and forth with them, and yeah. then finally be like, "Okay, that's a deal." You know what I'm saying? Like he'll do wow. that. And so, uh, and but the other day, Katrina, I was teasing Katrina. I came home, I had pulled out so I had pulled out some cash, and I put it on the counter. And uh, you know, Katrina moved it, and I was like, "Did you take my money?" I guess he overheard it, and so yesterday uh that that money was in the in our drawer in the in the kitchen or what like that and she was pulling it out and he he saw her and he's like did you take daddy's money like that? <laughs> yeah. and she's like daddy's money is mommy's money no it's not that's yeah. daddy's money and so that, did you hear it yeah yeah did you jump in and say <laughs> no something? no i wasn't there i wasn't this is katrina telling oh, me okay. afterwards because she's like getting on to me you know you got to be careful what you say around him about our money you know what i'm saying <laughs> i said why did you take my money <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's right. I got eyes everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, don't be taking my money. I got my son on you. You know what I'm saying? I'll call you out on that shit. Oh, that's, that's so good. That's funny. Oh, I love dude. that stuff. Is he still selling uh, to yes, your family dude. members? Yeah, he's definitely. Oh, yeah, the pictures, right? Yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, pictures. Yeah. He's definitely. Uh, that's look, my favorite trait currently about him right now is the negotiating. His his ability to, it, for a kid who it feels like it, uh, his vocabulary was behind. His communication skills, his negotiation skills, his understanding of selling to get what he wants, like it, he, that's like ahead. So he's behind, he was behind forever on speech and vocabulary yeah. and all those things, but he seems so advanced when it comes to like understanding like the art of a deal. Is like he still he's, super into math? Is he still great. like that? Oh, yeah. He's really good at math. Math has been. What's that show you have him watch? Number Blocks, bro. That's the one. It's. Okay. I can't. I mean, I was trying to remember the other day, and I don't know if it if that. I, I had quite a few people after I, I talked about it on the show that um, they got their kids into it, and they said the same thing. They swore like, "Oh my god!" Same thing with my kid. I mean, some kids take to it, some kids don't. Um, he just and I don't know. I think that's for everybody. Like, I mean, look at your son with the science thing right now. Like, he's once they become obsessed. Like you gotta you just, let them you go just, with it. Yeah, you lean it. You lean into yes, it, right? Hard. And then they'll they'll go keep going. If they're like, obsessed, it, 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 let them be obsessed and go with it. That's how I was. With, learn and remember. Yeah, that's how I was with number blocks, and it was it didn't take long for me to see it. Where mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, this kid like yeah. he barely could count to like twenty five, and then all of a sudden he's counting to hundred. He's adding. He's subtracting, yeah. and I was like, and he's it's wild. So we could do stuff, and I love to challenge him like this now is where. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll see something that'll be like, and for a kid that age, uh, it, they don't even teach addition yet, right? Right now, it's just counting. Like mm -hmm. you're 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 pre kindergarten, you're you're counting. They don't add and subtract, but he's already adding and subtracting, and he's not just adding and subtracting. He's like adding complex numbers, and you'll I can do things now with him because of that number blocks. They teach him how to count in fives and tens, in twos and th multiples of threes. Oh wow! So I can do things with him where a number will be like uh, twenty plus twelve. You know, which would, for mm -hmm. a kid that age, that would be really hard. And he'll he'll sit on there and you can see him trying to figure it out and go, well, what's 20 plus 10? He's got that right away. 30. Okay. Two more, son. Oh, 32. Like, so he's- Oh, good. Like, he's learning how to break it down really fast, like, because he's been taught all the multiples. Oh, okay. If it's 10 plus 20, I know that right away because I already know how to and count. And then you just add two. And then I just add two. Yeah, we, we just got this, uh, this toy. It's not a toy. It's a learning uh, thing, but it's got these two hands on it like this and they're Velcro. And it comes with numbers. And so you put one number up here and then you move the fingers down to match whatever's on the number. So it's all kinesthetic plus the numbers. 
and it adds up. And so now he's learning how to do that with his fingers, with the hands. Uh, do you yeah. know what your son is, would be good for right now? He's at that age. I have a bunch if you want them because Max hasn't used them in a long time. But have you seen the leapfrog of they touch the words and it reads it? Yeah, we have that. Oh, you do have yeah, that? Yeah, we do. Yeah, that one's money yep. too. Like yep. that, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Like yep. So the kids they touch the words, they see the word, they hear the word, and then so he can read the book to uh -huh, himself. Like, uh -huh. I, I think that was a great tool. Yeah. Um, we use that. You know, I'm trying to think of the things that – I mean, we have a lot and we've tried a lot of different things. There's certain things like number blocks, like the leapfrog reading that, you know, I saw us implement it and I went, oh, wow, I saw the, the, the You, the you know, it's so, it's funny, a study just, I, I pulled up a study. In fact, I, I saved it to bring it up because um, you just reminded me of it. There's a study that was done on exercise and mental health for children. This was done um, a, a, a fin this was at, at a Finland and the, the summary says a recent study found that good physical <clears throat> fitness from childhood to adolescence is linked to better mental health in adolescence. So, uh, so the connecting physical fitness to better mental health. Of course. There's a couple reasons for this. One is the brain is a physical part of the body. So when you have a healthy hardware, you're less likely to be depressed, less yeah. likely to be anxious because the brain itself is healthy. But I also think there's another part, which is uh, there's a there's a learning that happens from kinesthetic, yes. from movement. Yes. And in the brain, the way the brain develops when you're young, this is different when you're older. When you're older, getting very specialized is a good idea. But when you're younger, and we see this in studies on athletic performance, a child that does five different sports – Growing up, will do better at one sport later that they that they really like than if they focused on just that one sport their whole life. Because their body it can um, react and, and adjust to like certain variables. If you're not exposed to those variables, that's right. In this one sport only, then you're not going to be you know as accomplished of an athlete. When you're well, a child, your brain is so plastic and so moldable and so shapeable that you're better off developing the whole thing. So if you develop the whole thing, which includes music, mm -hmm. uh, language, movement, touch, emotion, all that stuff, the more you develop all of them, the better you develop each of them. Well, it also yeah. highlights how the body and the brain adapts and it adapts in both directions. Yeah. I mean, it, even as we age, forget just when you're a kid, like, okay, when you're a kid, you, you, you do all those things for what the point Justin made. But if we don't do those things, then the then the brain says there's no need for it. There's yeah. no need for me to know what a 360 twist and crossover yeah. is because in my sport, I don't need that. So therefore, I don't understand. My body doesn't need to communicate and speak to yeah. those muscles. Never been challenged in that direction. Versus right. the kid who's tried all the different sports that challenge in all different planes and all different ways of stability and in all the different directions. And it's like, oh, okay, this is familiar. So that when those unfamiliar you know things happen, their bodies go, well, oh. not to mention the skills you develop yes. right so that you can apply that will give you an advantage over the other competitors and it's not just physical though what I, again what i'm trying to yeah, express yeah. here is when you're when you're young the brain grows so fast when you're a kid right it's all like, data that you're learning and, and, and developing the entirety of the brain means that each individual part develops better so yeah. in other words rather if you want your kid to be a math whiz you're better off having them learn a lot of different things Music. Uh, than just math, mm -hmm. okay? Even though you're going to spend more time on just math, they'll be worse off than if they develop the brain in the entirety. Now, later on, as you get older, then it becomes specialized. Then it's like, okay, focus all your time on this one thing. But if you, uh, if you don't develop the kinesthetic awareness and touch and emotion and music and all these different things, you actually hurt these other things. And we know this now. So We've taken a lot of these things out of school thinking we need to focus all of our energy on STEM. And what we're finding yeah. is that kids are actually getting hurt because yeah. they don't. And music is a big one. Music is huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's a very, very big I one. I love that for learning. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. Uh, you used to talk about kinesthetic. Have you guys seen now they have um, these tiles? I guess it's in Japan where um, they have these sort of sensors that you step on top of the tiles and it compresses it. It captures that energy. So literally, you know, they're putting them out on walkways. And so they can actually collect they generate power energy and, energy energy re and then translate it? it to a battery. What? Yeah. Well, it makes, that's great. It makes perfect sense. 
I remember a long time ago there was a gym in Oregon that was like trying to develop oh, yeah. this oh, entire like yeah. <laughs> it was almost like <laughs> no it was brilliant a like all the, tre- all the treadmills all the things like that was supposed yeah. to power the, the facility. Do you remember right? how it worked? I rem- it's, it was, so you paid a membership, but you could take the price of the membership down. To Is that how, how much that's what we thought would be a good idea? I think we said Is that. Is that what we said? Yeah, we said uh, that. We did. Yeah, we said they, that. I, I feel like they were working on that. I don't think, I don't know if it ever became Let's like a public thing. Oh, this is how this works right here, huh? That's the kinesthetic tiles. Yeah. Uh, people walking. Yeah, so it powers the lights. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I just love innovations. It's like, it, it seems like, um, you know, they're just maximizing opportunities. So it's not like we're... We're doing anything different. We're just you know capturing uh, energy now. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I want look up the gym thing that we're talking about because I do I do remember talking about that way back when. I think it was our idea. I think we we brought that, that gym we added that, and then I think we said you know what would be cool is what yeah. you would do is you would give them a price, and then if they you could work if it they, down, yes, you could work it down. That was our idea. That wasn't something being mm, done. I, I remember I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really cool. No, it is a good idea, and I and I don't know if I don't know why that wouldn't have taken off. I mean, it makes sense yeah. that a, a gym like that it does, but I wonder how efficient and effective it is because okay, so let's use the example of the tiles. Right, mm-hmm. sounds like a brilliant idea, except. How long does it take to offset the energy that right. and the cost of producing and, and creating and re- this repairing them and right. you know who knows if what the wear is on that? If it doesn't offset the energy that's used to do that, right. then it's actually not efficient. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's what people. Well, need it's kind of like wind power and stuff yes. like that, where you're like, oh no, when you actually look into it in terms of like it disrupting the environment, and you know, I, I guess there's like been a big so problem with with whales uh, because yeah. of the, the vibration, sound. the sound. It's actually been beaching a lot of whales. Yeah. Yeah, what the wind farms mm-hmm. because of the sound and the vibrations that they're producing, it's causing because whales are very sensitive to sound, mm-hmm. and it's causing them to beach and stuff like that. Interesting, yeah. almost yeah. like it, it's communicating to them, and so they don't. I know. think it's just confusing, it's like them. annoying. Yeah, it disrupts their yeah. whole yeah pattern. You know, that's Weird. what they, they navigational that's pattern. One, the, Dude, what, how okay? What's even more like? How do you make that connection? Like all of a sudden, these wh- whales are getting beached somewhere, and you're just like, "Oh, it's definitely the windmills." Yeah, I don't know what they. Do. <laughs> I mean, like I don't know. Who, like who made that studying co- it? Yeah, like yeah. who made that connection? Like who would have thought? Like oh, whales are getting beached. Marine somewhere. biologists must I mean, be the windmills yeah. around the corner. Like that, I wouldn't even think to wouldn't even think that. No, yeah. I know that that like uh, great white sharks have never been able to be kept in captivity because of something to do with how they sense their surroundings. Oh so, man, that that remind me of in, in South uh, Africa, I believe. Uh, there was a, an orca that they they found like it was on a killing spree. It killed like fourteen great, great whites. whites. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bro. Yeah. They like they're them. they're getting so much. I, I swear, if there's any species out there that's like evolving right in front of us, it's the orca. Have you seen them hunt? Yeah. Some of the ways that they hunt. I have. And they're but, taking out boats now because. But I didn't know, know it's evolving. I thought it's always been like they that. have. There's different pods of orcas. Will have different hunting techniques, and they'll learn from mm-hmm. each other. Like I know I've seen those they videos where they, where they, where they all work together, like to get to a seal, the get the wave, to get the seal to fall off the ice, and it's pretty yeah. wild to watch them do stuff like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, crazy. I didn't, I didn't know that that was like technically evolving though. That's yeah. what Speaking of the environment and stuff, uh, the, I was reading up on these what are they called forever chemicals? It's a, it's a class of chemicals yeah. that are in like nonstick cookware. Uh, it's in you know clothing. It can be in sprayed on surfaces. They call them forever chemicals because they, they don't, they stick around. They last, yeah. And they do affect the body. I looked up forever chemicals and what they're most strongly connected to. Testicular and kidney cancer were the oh, strongest connections. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, those are the strongest connections. Although they've also been connected to cardiovascular issues and other cancers. And these chemicals are disgusting. You know that they're finding it in rain? Yeah. Really? Yeah, a lot of different places. In, in fact, it's almost impossible if you live in a modern society to to be completely rid of them. Basically what That's you're so doing frustrating. Basically what you're doing is managing your exposure. One of the, so but yeah, but like Teflon's a big one, right? A big contributor your to that. Cookware is huge. Cookware is a big one. Mm-hmm. So do not use cookware that has any of these uh, uh, forever chemicals. Uh, we we there's a company we just started working with called Our Place. Oh, that's the name of the company. Our place. That's Our place. the 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 pans that we have. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. So they're, oh, they're iron. Anymore. They're cast iron. They're but awesome. They're coated in ceramic, I believe. Ceramic. Yes. So the, so they don't so no, so it's easy nonstick whatever, but no forever chemicals. We use them like crazy. I don't yeah. know if you guys do or not. Super yeah. high quality. Yeah, they are. They're really yeah. nice. And I, I love cast iron. The way it heats things up and everything. It's just so. I have uh, I have some family. You know my cousin who's who uh, lives up in Seattle. Like they're yeah. like super. You know. 
organic everything yeah. and like homeschool all the good stuff right and they we, she found out that we were partnered with them she like freaked out oh my god it's like my favorite brand <laughs> really nice. yeah, yeah 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 she they had already had like their whole house all redone in them and i mean katrina and i i remember when we first got them before we even partnered with them like i was like oh these are awesome so mm -hmm. excited to, to work with them Speak i didn't know that we continued i didn't realize that that's awesome yeah yep. speaking of partners um we got our organifi report so that for people that know that that's the company we've been with them the longest right of all sponsors now? yeah they have to be the longest yeah yeah, yeah they are. the top seller by far by far by far is their green juice still i yeah. still i just had some right now still number is. one yeah always is and they've been selling green juice now for a long time. I were mean, they, they one of the first ones, popular ones? Yeah. They were one of the first ones. How yeah. much for the, at least 10 years? I was say, most it. people it became know a whole them section. or Athletic Greens. Yeah. How far back do they go in comparison to the two? Yeah. So I was looking that up earlier and I we met Drew with Organifi back in, I think, 2013. Yeah, and so they were doing the greens back then. Back then. then yeah. But they'd already been doing them yeah. for a few years. Yeah. So they've got to have been around for at least. 13, 14, maybe 15 yeah. years. I mean, you got to credit Drew that he's been on the front end of a lot of- I like, would have never thought a green juice uh, as a supplement, even 15 years ago. Yeah. But yeah. That, they crush. It's the number one bestseller because of their re-signs uh, re re or how many people repurchase. I mean, it makes the most sense in a, in the case like we're, at least how I use it, right? So and I got called out recently. The people were, because I've been obviously showing my food every mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you don't eat a lot of vegetables. Where's your greens? Yeah, yeah, they're like, you don't eat a lot of it. And I don't. Because when I prep, I cannot stand reheated vegetables. Like, I that know. is just, ugh. Really? Yeah. I'm yeah, you, don't, that. That, you, you like reheated vegetables? Oh. You me? I'll just eat it. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's not like, I, vegetables already are not like the top of the list for me as it is. I mean, I, I like Olive them. oil. Let's throw some olive oil on it. Reheated? Yeah. All soggy? Even it's all okay. mush. Yeah. yeah, soggy broccoli or yeah. soggy asparagus? Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I, so I got a problem yeah, with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I yeah, definitely, I mean, that, so when I normally prep, and, normal, and the way it works is the, the meal I make that night, we almost always have some like, you know, spinach, asparagus yeah. or something or like or broccoli or whatever with the dinner. But then when I prep the meals, I just do rice and the meat. I mean, it's almost always rice and meat or sweet potato and meat or white potato and meat. So you just do the green juice. And then, yeah, and then I just pay attention like to my digestion, my energy, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's like, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's been a few days of like eating like that. And then I'll just make sure to I I introduce it. Speaking of food, uh, I just read a study on toddlers. Toddlers, 50% of the uh, of their diet is heavily processed foods. The average toddler. 50%? Half. Half. And this is exceptionally... Wow. Bad because toddlers, children are developing their eating habits and their palate uh, at that age. This yeah. is when they develop the, the this is why it's so Turns important. Into their preferences later on. It's so important to introduce little kids to different textures and flavors and whatever because you actually develop it for the rest of their life. So these are kids, they're eating processed foods half, at least half the time. You're setting them up. I, you know, it was when we had Max, that was a, that was a popular question that I always thought was really interesting. Um, people were always asking like, oh, what do you feed him and how do you feed him? I'm like, he eats what we eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like from a very, very young, I mean, obviously we had to uh, sometimes had to tear it up into tiny little pieces yeah. when he was barely We'd developing. Blend it up when he was real tiny. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, like he, he ate exactly what we ate. Like mm -hmm. we didn't get, it was like we ate and then I gave him a jar of baby food or some shit. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, we're eating chicken and sweet potato today. You're eating chicken and sweet potato today. Mm -hmm. We're having steak and rice day. You're eating steak and rice day. It was like the norm and like, I don't know. I don't. Uh, it's it's interesting that I mean, to me, I think that highlights how conditioned we are to marketing and advertising. Yes, because so many commercials are so much money is put into commercials of all these baby foods, and they're convenient. So I get it, right? Because it's like there's a convenient factor, and then the marketing factor of like they make you think that this is a better, healthier choice. It's like no, a better, healthier choice is to feed your kid the way you yeah, take care of and feed food. yourself. There is You're no eating. such thing as baby food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, toddler food. There's food. Yeah. yeah. And you just cut it up smaller. That's for it. You. Just make it smaller. Yeah, I remember when, <laughs> when, uh, when my four-year-old was, he started moving into solids, uh, more solids. Jessica was just blending. We actually broke three blenders because of this. She would blend tri-tip and sweet potato. Just uh, And it was his favorite thing. Oh, he got husky. <laughs> he got he got real thick. <laughs> he loved it. He's on that bulk. Oh yeah, it's got... so good too though because I I really think I know Justin's talked a little bit about this because he's admittedly uh, was was different with the two kids right and I think you've admitted that you see the difference as they got older with their their palates and how their eating habits are 
And I feel like Max is such a good eater, but I think it's because of the foundation that we laid everything from the way we were with sweets to the way we were with whole foods. So food is not like, we haven't had this battle that so many of my friends yeah. have all gone through. Like almost every one of my friends have gone through a food battle with their kids at some point mm -hmm. in their yeah. early five years. You can still win the battle though. I'll tell you that. I'm sure you can, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, there's, it's not like a hopeless thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it is. I mean, you set them up. It's so important because then, yeah, you won't have quite as much of the challenge later because that's what they're going to prefer. Yeah. yeah. Justin, I was going to ask you, you had said in in a text a few days ago, maybe a week ago, about the gym in Santa Cruz that mm -hmm. they're building or whatever. Oh, yeah. I was trying to tell you guys how awesome this this new facility is going to be, and we got to be members. Like, it's it's insane. So why, why is it so My buddy sick? Chris. Yeah, Chris. So they own the Santa Cruz Power Fitness right now, um, and we went over there to kind of highlight, you know, his business and kind of get some insight on, like, how – he runs it and like how they became successful and whatnot uh, for the coaches. Cause you know, we thought that like a lot of our coaches and trainers, like we'd like to give them examples of like somebody who's, you know, been able to kind of make it through a lot of the trials, tribulations of that is really hard. I mean, we literally deter people from the idea of like owning a gym. Yeah. And so to get somebody that could actually articulate it and like highlight all these like um, problems they had and were able to overcome was really cool. But anyway, this, um, new facility they're building. It's huge. It's right next to this Whole Foods. It's it's um, it's a sports club, and so it's like you go in there, and, and to the left is going to be like all recovery. It's going to have That's like, like a thing now. They're putting in all of them. That's great. Yeah. It, okay. So here's one thing that um, I thought was brilliant. I don't know if Camille like I don't think she like uh, invented it, but her idea. They looked into it, and they got kind of um, a, a way to kind of figure this out. So instead of having um, cold plunges, you know, that occupy a bit of space, like they're, they had, they turned that into a shower. They call it snow shower. And so, That's smart. so they can, but they have to outfit the water. piping and everything. So it's, it, it can keep that really cold temperature and That's not smart. freeze. And so you, you go in and it's like 40 degrees. And, and so they're going to have it so you can kind of taper the temperature and so you can like start with like a little bit warmer and you can kind of like titrate it down. And then I'm like, yeah, do the Wim Hof like method right there. Boom. Uh, and then, you know, you have your red light therapy. You have like uh, this whole section in the back for trainers to, to train them in their own private little section. Uh, there's the, the, the open floor is going to be it's very like kid and parent um friendly like mm. they, they thought of this whole thing where um you know th they'll they'll have a space where they basically can um they can tutor and then and then have have them go through also like a, almost like a physical education with that and like programming uh and then the local everything all the contractors too that he hired are all local and so it's like it pulls the community in like oh, he cool. pulls all the schools in i just think he's He's on to something with this. You yeah. guys, it, and it just looks beautiful. You know, sometimes I miss, sometimes, not often, <laughs> because it takes so much energy. Yeah. But you guys know. But sometimes yeah. I miss working in a gym. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a fun It's a fun culture. It's a fun culture. Yeah, yeah. You got music going. People are working out. I miss it. Are, I miss that vibe. There was something it's about- It's just a lot of energy. You oh, guys know it's exhausting. I would, I would, you get to walk into it, yes. I wouldn't trade what we do for a minute for that. Not <laughs> yeah. even, if they, even if I made I the same kind of money, I still wouldn't It's just trade. a lot of energy. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. But it's rewarding and it's fun and it's so unique like what else is like that like there's not a lot of careers or jobs that are like that no everybody's it's, in a, everybody's in a good mood usually it's hyped and it's great and i mean if you, what, what is kind of unique that i think is really special about our, our space or being a, a trainer if your peer like how often and what other careers can you guarantee that all of your peers and your coworkers are all growth minded like they typically are yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yep. I mean, you, I mean, if you are in pursuit of health and wellness and bettering yeah, yeah, yourself, you're right. mm. like it, it automatically creates kind of a bias of that, type yeah. of people. And even though there's uh, obviously a huge eclectic group of different types of trainers, and there's people you're going to probably like and not like, that's uh, like mm -hmm. inevitable. It does at least create a, a commonality in mm -hmm. all of us where a lot of jobs that doesn't necessarily, you could be a, a whole group of engineers and you have really different types, maybe a personality similarities, but that like having all that, in, like a core common thing like that. I don't know. I feel like that's, no, I worked, I it. worked in the banking industry for a very short period of time. And, uh, 
Hated it. Very good. Hey, oh, my. how long did you last again? It wasn't very yeah. long at all. I almost thought you said baking. No, I, thought you said <laughs> I was in the baking industry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine me baking. How long was it? It wasn't very long, was it? No, I got in. Uh, I was a premier banker for Bank of America. And uh, then I got my Series 6 and 63 license. And then shortly after, opened up my studio. This was way back in the day. But uh, so it must have been a six month process. But I you know, sitting in a bank, you know what it sounds like when you sit in a bank? You hear the AC. That's what you hear. You hear, whoosh. and when you talk, you talk like this. Everybody talks hey. like this, and everybody goes nice to lunch, to and then they come back, yeah. and everybody gone by five o'clock. Mm. And I can't walk in and yell, "Yeah, what's up? Yeah. What's happening?" What do, like, so what do, bro? You know how what's often not, people like told me to keep rates. it down yeah. In, yeah. in the bank. So it, 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 it was it, the worst. And banks are like known for like there's super traffic times and then there's dead times like crazy, Dude. right? So what what does a banker normally do when there's nobody? When they it, sit when it's uh, eleven sit. eleven a.m. on Tuesday. Nothing. Just sit there. Nothing. Calls anything? Yes, calls, but not really. I, I was making calls. Listen, I was making it, calls. Like who you calling? And I, the ma the this bank is all manager, our listeners. I feel like the bank the bank <laughs> manager. Would, oh, yeah, I listen to my podcast, You know, how often right this happened. I'd make a call because remember I, I was investment, so my job was to get people who had certain size accounts. To want to do investments or whatever. Okay, so that's so what you would do is you probably got a a whole bunch leads. of people leads yes. from the bank of like, hey, these are everybody who have a million dollars in their account. Yeah, yeah, Call yeah. them. Yeah, and yeah. You're, you're, so okay. I'm on the phone calling, and this happened enough times to where I, I was like, I can't stand this. I'm on the phone, and I you got I'm, look, I, I got sales in my blood, right? I'm on the phone talking. Bank manager will come back. Can you please keep it down? I'm like, oh, what the? F I can't sell. Yeah, I was about to ramp it up. <laughs> you know, yeah. I can't do this. You know, uh, it was the only time in my life where I watched the clock. I'd never done that before. Uh, where I'm yeah. looking at the clock. When's lunchtime? Like, get me out of here. Yeah, I remember should, watching should the clock. Yeah, having a job where you watch the clock is like, oh, pain, nightmare. Yeah, dude. when I worked assembly line stuff in factories, it was like that. No, nightmare. Never do that. Never, never any had desk job. Yeah, no. any any job where you watch the clock, it's like. Painful. It's Imagine painful. there's people, people that uh, work that way every day, dude. Yeah, I know. I that's, know. That's and God bless you, man. You work. You're at. You're honest. You work hard. Good. You know. Go for. Good for you. Yeah. I just could. I just no. Couldn't do it. The gym totally different. Yeah. Totally different. I Sometimes know. I miss it. Agree. Shout out. Yeah, I'm gonna shout out Chris um, and uh, Santa Cruz Power Fitness. So let's see. What's his handle? Uh, Chris Ellis. IFBB Pro. So it goes Chris underscore Ellis underscore IFBB underscore Pro. There you go. Yeah, great gym. Go give him some love. Element is an electrolyte powder you put in your water. No artificial sweeteners, no sugar. It adds the right amount of sodium to give you better workouts, better pumps, more energy, and it tastes amazing. Go check them out. It's the best, best electrolyte powder you'll find anywhere. Go our first caller is Abby from Texas. Hi, Abby. How you doing, Abby? How you doing? Hi. How y'all doing? Good. We're doing right. good. How can we help you? How are you? Good. Yeah. So first off, just wanted to say thank you for all the content, all the resources y'all put out there. Um, it's helped me as an athlete, as a trainer, and overall person. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, so I'll just jump right in. Uh, so I'll kind of read off what I put in the email and we'll go from there. Okay. So I've been playing sports my entire life, um, found a passion for beach volleyball in the beginning of high school and pursued that, uh, committed to playing college, played all four years in college, uh, found a love for strength training and nutrition throughout high school and college as well. Uh, my own goals were usually pushed aside as a student athlete as I, I couldn't go on a cut or do the training that I particularly wanted to do as I had you know, to put my sport first. So I've kind of always looked forward to graduating and, you know, getting outside of sports so that I could train and eat how I wanted without the restraints. So now that I'm graduated, I'm working in the fitness industry and I've kind of, you know, asked myself what's next for me. Uh, my mind has often wandered towards bodybuilding, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't pursue that fully as to go compete on stage, but rather as my own journey to commit to and document, um, just a goal to pursue, to challenge myself again. Um, it intrigues me, but my mind and body, you know, it, it kind of worries me the short and long-term effects of that. So I've also thought about powerlifting or weightlifting. And if that would be a better route as they both have the competitive atmosphere as well and a challenge that I can pursue. 
So I'm just kind of struggling with what direction I want to pursue, which one's the healthiest option for me and most attainable. And just as like a follow-up question to whatever y'all do say, like, how do I approach my training and nutrition going forward? I'm just kind of kind of at a standstill where I want to proceed from here. So well, you, you know what yeah, the, any you, help. You know what these two guys are gonna suggest. They're definitely gonna push I you. Know. They're gonna push you in the direction of the the power lifting. Not necessarily. Um I so <clears throat> I, I think they, I think they're both <laughs> incredible for different reasons, right? Like I I think there's a lot of value in both. I think uh, and it sounds like you have a really good mindset around health, fitness, and exercise, and so I would think that you're probably a good candidate for somebody who would want to try and do bodybuilding. You know, going with the attitude and the approach of hey, I just like treating it like an experiment and learning about nutrition and taking it to that level. I mean, I to this day I think that that period of time in my life <clears throat> taught me more about nutrition than all my prior certifications and years experience with regular clients. I mean, it, it forced me to really dive into the nitty gritty of understanding nutrition and how it affects the body and then feeling it going through it. So I saw tremendous value. Uh, and I think I've, I've been a better communicator around nutrition because of it. Uh, so I love <clears throat> that. Right. But I also think that powerlifting has, in, I mean, you want to talk about having to know your programming really well. Like you got it. You cannot, you got to You powerlifting. There's no room for like bodybuilding. There's no room for air and nutrition. Uh, you can have a subpar programming, but if you're dialed nutritionally, you're going to bring a good physique. Powerlifting is the opposite. You can have kind of subpar nutrition, but you can't have, you got to be dialed in programming. So they, in my opinion, they both are incredibly valued for different reasons. I guess the, the question I would ask you is which one do you uh, excites you more to learn about right now. And maybe you end up doing both, but which one do you want to focus on? And then we talk about like how you yeah. approach that. Abby, if you're going to mm -hmm. compete, if, if this is going to be something you're going to do competitions in, then I'll pick powerlifting. It's going to be a healthier sport. Bodybuilding uh, competition is just not a healthy, it's not mentally healthy for people, especially for women. If you're not going to compete, if it's just for you, and it's a question of the training and the focus, bodybuilding is very healthy. Bodybuilding is easy on the body. It's easier on the joints than powerlifting. Yep. Uh, you 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 learn great technique with exercise. You know diet. It's all awesome. So if you're not going to compete, if this is just for you, then I would pick powerlifting. Now the other thing is that you're in the fitness industry and you're working as as a as a coach and a trainer. You mm -hmm. you're probably going to want to do all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know you go through a phase of bodybuilding, go through a phase of powerlifting. Weightlifting is the highest skill demands of all of the mm -hmm. lifting sports, but being a high level athlete, you might like that. You might like the skill aspect of it. A lot of people don't have the the patience to perfect the skill of weightlifting because it takes a long time to get really good at weightlifting, well, far longer than than uh, you know any other conventional lifts. But right. if it's just for you, like have have a good time. If you have to pick one and it's just for you and you want the healthiest one, bodybuilding. If you're going to compete. Powerlifting. If it's all for you and you're not competing, uh, you, I think you should do all of it. Yeah. Surprisingly, I would probably lean first with bodybuilding. Uh, and I know it's 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 surprising, but uh, I, the reason is is because you're a trainer, um, and I feel like it's probably the most relevant in terms of you know you getting your average client and being able to go through that process yourself of being. Um, you know, so um, dialed in in terms of like, you know, how each, um, you know, how, how, how nutrition is really affecting you and your performance, like in the gym and how you can kind of move and body composition, and right? body composition is, is, is just yeah. a huge pursuit. Most people are going to come in to you wanting to, um, you know, nail down. And so I think it's, like, and too, I watched Adam go through that and just how he geek out on like, you know, just having enough water and, you know, and how that, all that stuff, like you can kind of communicate that so much better in terms of like, maybe it's sodium, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, that you're feeling, um, you know, out of shape and bloated and this and that. And so I think for talking points, I think, and too, it's a, a bit less, um, you know, like it's in terms of risk reward with clients, I think that, uh, you know, bodybuilding provides a little bit more. Um, you know, you know, less risk and, and more uh, result. But in, in terms of the actual powerlifting for you individually, that's where I would go if it's like a total individual pursuit. 
so yeah. it's not much different than their answers, but um, it, in terms of where I see it as a coach, I would probably lean there first just to be able to be a better communicator. It does sound like we're all on kind of the same page yeah. and it really comes back yeah. to, are you, uh, are you doing this more for the, you know, competitive Abby and this is, and so you want to choose something that interests you competitively, or are you doing this because you want to enhance your skills as a trainer? Because that is probably yeah. how I would are decide. You, if I'm yeah. Doing. Are you going to compete in any of these or is this all just for you? So for bodybuilding, like I'd probably just do that for my own, uh, knowledge, own experience. Um, but if I did do powerlifting, I probably would try to get in a competition or two just to push myself a little bit more. But if it was bodybuilding, I'd probably just do my own, my own journey with that. All right. Well, okay. Then do this. Start with bodybuilding for yourself. And when you get that, cause you're, you're an athlete, you've been training, you've been competing mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. You're going to get the itch to compete. Okay. Then go to powerlifting and compete. Do, don't compete in bodybuilding. Getting on stage, getting judged by your appearance. What's the, this is like a road to, to terrible relationship with, with exercise and diet. So I would say go bodybuilding. And then when you're like, you know what? I want to compete. Just go to powerlifting. By the way, the same exercise in powerlifting you're going to use in bodybuilding as well. So it's not that hard of a transition. It's just, it's just a focus on technique is different and the programming changes a bit. Yeah, so I guess... I'm first off, I'm shocked y'all said that. I listen to so many of your podcasts where y'all usually <laughs> lean the opposite direction. I listened to one the other day, y'all's powerlifting versus bodybuilding. I'm like, oh, they're for sure gonna tell me to go powerlifting. <laughs> so I'm shocked, but I, I'm like secretly excited. Like I wanted y'all to say this. But I guess from here, like, how do I approach my training and nutrition? Uh, because I'm kind of gonna do this like on my own, on uh, my own research. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna hire you know a coach or anything. So I guess a uh, couple couple guidance points to help me out. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, let me uh, get Doug to put you in our private forum if you're not already in there, because okay. we have a lot of trainers that have <sighs> competed and other, and there's actually clients of mine that I've helped do a bikini show, do stuff. So definitely a great community. If you're going to be doing this on your own and not hiring a coach, th that is going to be a great resource for you to just like ask people what their experience is like. Yeah. There's a lot of trainers that have done it inside that forum. So definitely utilize that in the community. Uh, if you're not watching the series I'm doing on YouTube, you should definitely be watching that because that's kind of similar to that, right? The the the, the part that's most important. I always tell people when it gets when it comes to competing in bodybuilding, uh, it's really setting yourself up. It, that the real work is done before you go into prep. The diet part of of cutting calories, increasing movement, and you know that stuff is really just shredding you down and revealing the work that you've put into building your metabolism, building your body. So really, the work is before the prep on that. And so, and a lot of that right. just, yeah. it comes down to how your training is right now. Where are you at metabolically? Like, are you in a healthy place calorie wise? Like that would be very important. Like I wouldn't even take a, a, a female client of mine if she told me, hey, I, want, I don't want to get ready for your bikini show. And I said, well, how many calories a day do you eat currently right now just to make your maintenance? And they'd say things like, oh, like 2,000. That, that's my maintenance. I'm like, yeah, you're not in a good place to do a cut. Like I need to get your metabolism up to 26, 2,800 calories plus if I'm going to put you in a cut like that for that long of a period of time. So that is the stuff that you should be doing right now is tracking calories, finding out what is your maintenance, getting yourself up to a healthy place metabolically to prepare yourself for an extended cut. Yeah. You, you, since you're not going to compete in bodybuilding, just, I, I would say go with that. And in programming wise, start with maps anabolic, do the three day a week version and then aesthetic. And yeah. then you can either do aesthetic or symmetry afterwards, <laughs> yeah. but that'll give you a nice, okay. a nice solid foundation. The, the roadblocks, okay. the, the, now here's going to be your roadblocks, to, is, is going to be trying not to, try not to overdo the volume. Bodybuilding can get carried away with just ridiculous amounts of volume and splits and stuff like that. So if you start to notice your strength isn't improving, you're starting to feel fatigued, uh, your sleep is off, um, then you probably need to drop the volume. I don't know if you've been listening to us, how, how, I don't know how long, but uh, we documented on the podcast my journey, my, I think it was Adam's Road to Pro, we called it. What was that called? Oh. So you could go back. I, I, you know, we were really bad at podcasting, but we do sh we do share the whole journey of me dieting and, and on the show. So there's a whole okay. series of I don't know, maybe ten podcast episodes. Wow. Yeah, and I think we called it uh, Adam's Journey to Pro or Road to Pro or something like that. Like, so if you go back, no, that was Justin. no, yeah, no, it's like Road to Pro, something yeah. like that. 
Um, if you use it, ask, ask mind pump, ask mind and look for, you know, Adam's road to, to pro or bodybuilding. You'll see a series of uh, episodes that you can listen to too. But do, do you have, okay. do you have maps anabolic, Abby? Yeah, I am in, I just started phase three of anabolic. Oh, um, I have aesthetic. Um, do you have symmetry? Too. I do not have symmetry. All right. I'll send you symmetry. I, you're going to like that program. Okay. Oh, well, so is there a specific order I should be? So I'm on anabolic now. So I finish in, I guess, three weeks. So go to aesthetic or go to symmetry? I like, I like symmetry next while you're tracking your calories, figuring out where your maintenance is, building your metabolism up. And then when you start what what would be your prep, even though you're not going to get ready for show, but if you decide, okay, hey, I'm ready to start this cut. I've figured out my caloric maintenance. I've been tracking my steps. I kind of know where my movement is. Okay, I'm ready to start the quote unquote real diet to get ready to get lean and ripped. Then I would transition into MAPS mm -hmm. Aesthetic. Okay. Okay. And I have a rough, uh, rough estimate. My maintenance is 2300. I maintain there around a couple for probably three months uh, in state same same body mass uh muscle mass body fat um and i just recently probably last week i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna cut here i dropped 500 so i just this past week i've been going at 1800 um not super strict i haven't been doing it to the t um but i've been more mindful where's your that where's your body fat percentage right now uh, 21.4. Yeah, reverse diet. Yeah, I would reverse diet. Yeah, yeah, start getting your calories up. Reverse would, diet through this whole process. Yes, so that this would be the recommendation. Follow MAP Symmetry after anabolic with the intent of trying to increase your calories week over week, just slowly. 200 calories, 200 more calories. And I, I'd, I'd like, if you're in the 20, low 20%, 20 and we want to cut for a show, I probably want you at least... 2,500 plus calories, 2,500 calories plus for your maintenance. That's a, a, a healthier place. You're, you're not going to gain body fat, River. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to reverse diet. You're just going to build strength and muscle. And the, I, I don't think your body fat will even go and up. And the reason for that, Abby, is if you're at 21% right now, and let's say you, you're at, and your maintenance is 22 and you cut to 1,800, you're going to lean out a little bit, but then you're going to hit a plateau. And you're going to hit a plateau probably somewhere around 19% body fat or so. And if you're trying to get like rip, bikini ripped, yeah. you're going to want to be lower than that. And then where are we going to go from there? Uh, down to fifteen hundred, like so. It doesn't give yeah. you a lot of runway. I, I'd I'd want you up twenty five hundred plus calories before I start putting you on a cut for a show. So that and this is what I mean by this is where the real work is done. The real work is in in setting yourself up metabolically before you get ready for a prep. And all the prep really is is revealing all your hard work, is showing yeah. the physique that you built and how good of a job you did at building your metabolism. That's the real work. Okay. Okay. So. Symmetry after this, um, reverse, reverse diet. diet. We're going 200 ish calories a week. One, yeah. one, to, one to 200 a week. Yep. Until and I get 26. At least, at least around there, you know, yeah. like I want you to be up at a place where you feel, I mean, a perfect place is actually pushing you to where you're like, Adam, I can't eat anymore. I and would it, be surprised. Know, I, I yeah. would be surprised if you couldn't get yourself up to 28 even uh, thanks, without think, gaining much body so. fat at all. I think so too. You're just going to get really strong, especially with your, okay. with your pedigree. I think you're going to get real strong from doing that. And it, okay. and again, use the form because obviously we're giving you kind of generic numbers and answers right now, off just to give you some sort of guidance. But we don't know for sure where that's going to land, right? Obviously, your right. your feedback is going to dictate where we go. So just uh, keep us up to date in the forum. Let us know, hey, okay. this is what I'm doing right now, and and then ask tag us and uh, ask other people's opinion. And trust me, people that have done this will be quick to to chime in and give your opinion. Okay. Right. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. Y'all told me what I wanted to hear. So I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. I appreciate y'all. Right thank you. Abby. Good, luck, right. good luck, Abby. All right. Thank you. Yeah. If, if, if you're not going to compete, uh, bodybuilding training has got better longevity than powerlifting and weightlifting. Yeah, well, the reason I went that direction with her, too, she's an athlete. She's been doing, like, that kind of performance training yeah. for so long. She needs to be well-versed because, like, your average person, you know, they're going to come in with these body composition goals, and it's like, you know, what a better way to yeah. address it. I mean, I think that's the best point that you made was that really when you think – if you're a trainer – the you're going to get way more value at understanding how to manipulate diet and nutrition for body composition than you are powerlifting. Like just like, a fact. Yeah, I mean you're just going. to, Most people 
80% of your clients that hire you are going to want to lose body fat. And so understanding how to build a metabolism. And bodybuilding is still strength training. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're still Absolutely. doing, you're still doing a lot of the important yeah. lifts, but yeah. it's, it, you're so much of training clients is nutrition heavy and you're going to get so much more of that yeah. from that. Our next caller is Brian from Illinois. What's up, Brian? How can What's we help you? you? Gentlemen, I am so excited to talk to you. Right. Um, I got to thank the four of you for creating something amazing with Mind Pump. I got to thank Doug too. Appreciate the invite to get on here. I, I found your podcast about four years ago and I have said so many times, I wish I had this kind of info in my twenties. <laughs> I really, I really do. I could have been somebody, Justin. I could have been somebody. Hey man, I say the same thing all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm 45 years old. I understand I'm late to the party. Um, the question I sent in is about maybe failing a bulk. Uh, maybe I ran it too long. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'll give you some context if it helps. Um, I was always a skinny fat kid. When I graduated high school, I fell in love with running and that's how I stayed lean for a lot of years. I, I probably did 20 miles a week, but I'm a small, I'm a small guy. I'm five, eight. Back then I was 165 pounds. Eventually I found P90X and that's what gave me a love for push-ups and pull-ups. Um, but I also had a love hate relationship with P90X. I never could complete the 90 days. I could do it for 60 days. And I would just quit because I, I feel like it would take part of your life away. Like, I, 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 listening to you guys. Now I understand I was very, very overtrained. But I cycled that for years. I, you know, I'm in that category. You don't know what you don't know, I guess. Um, fast forward with the COVID lockdowns, and I know you guys have heard this probably too much, but I, I noticed I was getting really soft. Uh, my wife came across something once and it said, COVID will turn you into a hunk, a chunk, or a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that yet. I'm working uh, on the chunk part, you know? Yeah, I haven't heard that. <laughs> Well, that's when I found your podcast. You okay. And for the first time, I started lifting with rest periods. And I did I did make some good progress from uh, maybe 2020 through 2022. Late in 22, I think you had an episode on bulking. And I've never done this before. I've never tried to gain weight, you know, like on purpose. So January 2023, I started my first bulk. Um, I think I added maybe a couple hundred calories a week in the beginning. I started probably around 2,300, maybe 2,500. And I got up to 3,700 calories. I, I went from January wow. 1st, 2023 into this year. And by April, <laughs> I was so sick to death of eating all the time. <laughs> I gave up. Um, I started off at 176, 174 pounds. And I don't know why I just got in my head. Maybe I can get up to 190. You know, as a small guy, that just seemed incredible to me to get up that big. Um, I tapped out at 186. I just couldn't eat anymore. So I'm curious. Did I did I run the bulk for too long? Did I just not eat enough? Um, was programming an issue? Any insight? Well, let's talk about. Did you? I don't necessarily think you did wrong or bad. Yeah. I mean, how did your body, what happened with your body fat percentage on the journey of gaining all that? Because you went from 174 to 186, right? Is that what I heard correctly? Correct. Yeah, okay. this is the biggest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, okay. So you got all the way up to 186. You've taken your calories from 2,300 through. So if you did a pretty good job of not putting on a ton of body fat along the way, you crushed it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put on more body fat than you put on muscle, well, then we did some things wrong. So did, have you tested? Do you have any idea on what the, the body fat percentage was before and now? I, I got one of those cheesy scales and it pretty much stayed the same right around 20%. Oh, it, I can't say there was a big change. Okay, okay, so that's pretty damn good. I mean, the fact that you were able to put on that much muscle. Uh, and, and your strength went up a lot? Um, I don't know. I, I'm 45. Like I said, I, I've i never done a PR. I don't, I've don't. i never done that kind of thing. My lifts, I guess, went up a little bit. Um, I just now got a gym membership. First time in my life, a couple months ago, a gym opened up close to the house. So uh, I have access now to a squat rack. I don't have a squat rack at home. I've got dumbbells, bench, uh, dip station, pull-up bar, you know. 
Uh, so I'm I was happy to add squats in for the first time. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a big. That's deal. gonna be huge. I mean, yeah. if you if you see strength gains and you're not gaining body fat or a ton of body fat, you 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 did yeah. a good job. Great yeah. measures. Yeah, you know this this the thing with calories is it doesn't work. It it doesn't always work linearly, right? So people think that if I just keep increasing the calories, I'm gonna keep uh you know my body's gonna keep responding the way that it, it, no, there's a limit to how the body's gonna respond. Typically. When there's a plateau with high calories, uh, then you want to go down into a little cut and change your programming. Typically, it has to do with workout programming. Now, you didn't have a squat rack back then. W what were you doing? What did your workout look like? Were you following one of our programs or something else? I tried. I, I do have some of your programs. I'm not a mooch, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 15 I bought for the wife. She's enjoying it. I got 15 Symmetry, Aesthetics, and hit. Okay. Um, I tried doing aesthetics. My my difficulty, I think, that's a lot. Part of my difficulty is um, yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, a lot. That's a lot, man. I've, I've well, I I get up a quarter to five every morning, and that's how I squeeze in a workout. Um, mm. Working commercial construction, I'm a tile setter, and in addition to that, I'm a full time volunteer minister. So I finally figured out the only way I can get a workout in is if I do it before work. I, there's just no gas in the tank when I get home from work. I, I've just realized that over the years. I I've been really consistent for four years, but I'm only doing about 30 minutes a morning, six days a week, 30 minutes a morning. I mean, that's, follow that's, Mass, 15. Mass 15 advanced program advanced yeah. is perfect for you. Yeah, that's and, it. Yeah. You're going to love that. And now that you've added uh, squats, having squats to your routine is going to be massive. I mean, you're talking about the single best exercise that somebody can do trying to pursue building muscle and or losing body fat and just overall strength. Mm -hmm. That alone, yeah. and Mass 15, it's built around the most, you know, the most important exercises, right? That program, the, the thought process for us was writing a minimalist program. What if we had to write something that somebody only had 20 minutes or so to work out? What are the exercises we definitely want them to do to get to gain the most, get the most bang for their buck? That's what that program is. It's perfect uh, for your time constraint. It's perfect for where you're currently at. And now that you're adding squats, let it do its work. It's going to do phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And and I, actually, what I do with you calorie wise right now, I don't want you really bulking or cutting. Eat when you're hungry. Make good cho food choices. Protein centric. Yes. Hit your protein intake. That's the number one priority is consistently, not sometimes, not an average, every day, hit your protein intake and make every meal that you choose to eat protein-centric. And when you're hungry, I want you to eat, but make it centered around protein. So if you feel like you're hungry, it's 8 o'clock at night, and normally you wouldn't, go eat, but make it a protein-centric meal. So, you know, my favorite thing late at night, like that's my Greek yogurt thing you might see me do. Like that's, so make those types of choices and let the programming do its work and don't actually overcomplicate or overthink the calorie thing. Just eat when you're hungry, protein centric meals, watch what will happen. Okay. I like that. I, tr I have tried logging. I haven't logged in a while, but when I would do an online ca a calculator, it would say my maintenance is roughly 2,700 calories. I feel like that's nonsense because- if I try to eat 2,700 calories and log it by the time it's bedtime, I'm so hungry. I could eat my own teeth. Yeah. Yeah. But those things, yeah. Are, those things are so they're inaccurate. They're yeah. so inaccurate and generic and it doesn't, it, it's, it, you know, I, the only reason why I like trackers is so you can see you inputting your own food and tracking yourself. What they kick back and tell you you should or shouldn't eat or what it estimates you're burning. I don't pay any no. attention to that. It's like, Eat the the best way you're going to find out about where your maintenance is is by doing exactly what I said is eating when you're hungry, making good choices, and then look at after a week about where you land. And then there's your average. And there's your average. That's, That's probably where your maintenance average is. But the key is going to be consistently not missing protein because you're you're now training the way I'd want you to train. You're adding squats, and this is going to be huge. So long as you hit that protein intake, we're going to build muscle, and you're going to just slowly lean out while also hopefully getting stronger. That's that's, that, that's the goal. Okay, I will give it a shot. You got it. I, I, if I have a, a weakness, it's probably my weekends. Um, I don't go off the rails on the weekends. I don't think I eat enough on the weekends. That's you that's, know Monday through Friday, I'm structured really well. Mm -hmm. I bring my food to work. I've got everything I need. Saturday, Sunday, sometimes I get two meals in, maybe three. Start the day. Of, start the day off with the early high protein yeah. breakfast. That'll, and that'll and help. Brian, don't 
okay, this needs to, this is, I'm glad you brought that up because this is huge. I and mean, you've probably heard me talk about this on the show. Like I have a th saying, win the weekend, right? Like winning the weekends would set the tone for my entire week. Cause I, just like you, I was dialed during the week. I'm on my schedule. So I meals are ready. I hit everything consistently, but on fr Saturday and Sunday, and just like you, it wasn't like I would eat like an asshole. It's that I would miss meals. I would miss meals. I wouldn't hit my protein intake, and you can't do that. If you do that, it's going to really count. It's really going to cancel out a lot of the great work we're doing during the week. So the most important thing is to hit that protein intake on Saturday and Sunday. And like Sal said, make that first breakfast meal a big, a big protein meal because if there's anything that will slow down your progress of building muscle, speeding that metabolism up, is going to be missing every Saturday and Sunday on protein. Okay. Sounds good. I have a new goal. And uh, you, since you have all the programs that you already need, are you in our private forum yet? No, I'm not. I'm going to have Doug give you access to that. And then if you just check in with us, okay, every few weeks or every at least once a month, letting us kind of know what you're seeing, what you're noticing, how you feel, we can kind of give you guidance along the way of, oh, add more of this, cut this. So we'll, we'll guide you along the way if you, if you update and you let us know how you're doing. Okay, we will do. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Jim. All Appreciate right, Brian. It, Excited for you, Brian. Uh, P90X is <laughs> one of the highest selling digital workout programs of all time. Ever. It also is simultaneously the worst programming. The worst. Yeah. yeah. It is terrible. I remember I had a client when it first came out. My dad was, my showed dad it to me. With that. And I was like, oh, they're just it's like trying to beat you up. on everything else. Yeah, they're just trying to beat you yeah. up by stringing a bunch of stuff together. And unfortunately, people believe that the, the the harder a workout is and the more they feel like throwing up, the better it is. Mm. So it just confirmed their bias that this is a good workout. Well, where the whole muscle confusion. Yeah, and then uh, I, I guarantee a huge cohort of people did the same thing that he did. And so they feel like the reason why it didn't work was because they didn't finish it. Yeah. 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 Or, or they did lose weight, but then they stopped because yeah. it overtrained them or whatever. And they yeah. gained the weight back. And it's like, my oh, I'm not good enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, no, it's, that's not the But issue. I tell you I what, uh, uh, I hope Brian listens to this. I hope Brian follows through on this because the advice we gave, if he wasn't doing squats, he was able to already reverse diet as well yeah. as he did. He follows maps 15 and he starts squatting, and he does not miss his protein intake. Yeah. He'll gain eight to ten it, pounds of muscle. It will radically, that, ch it'll radically change his physique. I guarantee it. It's early access to Black Friday. All MAPS programs, all bundles, 60% off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get ten entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Michelle from Missouri. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How can we help Hi, you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. How are you? Very good. We're good. Good. Okay. So my question is, I'm turning 50 this year and I'm not going to lie. I'm a little freaked out. I've never cared about age, but the big 5-0, there's just something about it. And I told my girlfriends, I have a year to get my shit together. <laughs> so I've always been consistent with cardio, but not so much on weights. So of all your programs, which ones would you recommend? for someone who wants to be consistent, but is terrified of injuring themselves. Oh, 40 plus. I, I love you. I, yeah. you know, okay. So what's your experience with strength training? Have you, what, do you do any of it consistently or is it very, very minimal? It's very minimal. And here's why. So I hired a trainer about 20 years ago and it's everything you guys always talk about how oh. trainers. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. And so I actually injured myself. And since then, I have just kind of done my own thing, but not very much, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry mm -hmm. about that. So, okay, uh, Matt, uh, starter. Starter, yeah. That's starter would be perfect for go. you. Absolutely perfect. All you need are dumbbells and a physio ball, um, or you can go to the gym. Uh, they'll probably have, they'll definitely have dumbbells and a physio ball, but it's the perfect program to start with. And Michelle, when you do it, really focus on technique and control yep. technique yep. and control nice slow cadence and and remember the the feel that you're looking for from strength training is very different than the feel that you're used to from cardio you're not looking for like this exhaustion 
you're looking for some exertion during the set and then you rest and then you rest fully for like two minutes, three minutes, and then you do the next set. It is a completely different feeling. You should feel very uh, invigorated and energized at the end and a little bit of soreness the next day is okay. But if you get really sore the next day, then you probably too pushed much. it too hard. You, you've probably heard us say many times is uh, about when you get into the workout, uh, approach it like practice. And when I have a client that I'm really introducing strength training to, uh, like yourself, the thing that I would tell you is I want you to be obsessed about the movement. To, and I want you to use the models in the video and I don't care about the weight. I don't care about your heart rate. I don't care about sweat. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is when you watch that model do the exercise, you want to be able to mirror it perfectly and become obsessed with that, like trying to make it look exactly how she is doing it in the video because your technique and form is far more important than heart rate and calories and all the things that you tend to kind of focus on when we're doing cardio type stuff. Mm -hmm. Totally opposite mm -hmm. intent going into it. That is going to serve you the most is get good at perfecting the movement. That's it. And, and Michelle, you're saying, so what do you mean specifically when you say get your shit together? What are you looking, <laughs> like what do you want out of this? Because I would I would also like to look into what you're doing for cardio and sleep because there's there's a whole picture here, not just the strength. Training, Lifestyle, I wanna, yeah. Well, yeah, so, so what do you mean by that? What do you mean by get my shit together? Um, all of that. So I listen to you guys and I hear you say that about the whole package, you know, and as someone that has narcolepsy, the sleep part has always been very, very important to me. So I feel like that I have actually consistently nailed down. Great. Um, and as far as the eating, um, I'm a recovering vegan. <laughs> okay. And I say recovering. Um, I was a vegan for about 10 years, and that's actually another question I had. So I recently reintroduced, after listening to you guys, chicken back into my diet but red meat still makes me very nauseous that's fine that's fine no worries can yeah. you do eggs fish yes i can do eggs and fish okay. but i'm still struggling to get 125 grams of protein each how day. much protein can you get from food where, where what are you hitting i'm probably getting about 80 to 90. okay so just from food with no shakes that's just from food no, that's with a shake. Okay, that's, that's with a shake? shake? Okay. Uh, and how yeah. many grams of protein is your shake? 20. 20 grams. Oh. Is it whey protein? Or yeah, is it uh, yeah, add another shake. Add another shake or two. You're fine. And if you can get it oh, from whole, okay. if you can get it from whole food, that would be the best. Okay. But if if you can't, and I I've worked with I've worked with a lot of uh, vegans and then people who went from vegan to omnivore. So I totally get it. It's like a it's like your palate has to change. And there's a, um, a repulsion that kind of happens, especially in those early days. I love eggs. Uh, that's going to be your best source of protein. Chicken's eggs, great. Fish and chicken is going to be fish great. Is great. Fish is great. Ground turkey, if you'll have turkey and things like that. I don't yep. know if you'll have that. Supp that's also a great choice. Supplementing with creatine is going to be very beneficial for someone like you. You'll prob oh, creatine. Mm. You'll okay. probably oh, notice cognitive benefits, energi energy benefits. It's, uh, it's a very, very good longevity supplement but you're also going to notice strength from it. You're going to get stronger from it. But longevity wise, it's amazing. And the people that benefit the most from creatine are people who have the least amount of animal uh, protein or animal sources of food in their diet. Cause that's typically where you get it from. Otherwise your body has to synthesize protein from amino acids and it just doesn't get, it doesn't get enough creatine uh, in that way. And so if, you tend to see cognitive improvements even. If I can give two thing, two pieces of advice that I think will make the most important difference in this journey for you, it's the giving you the tip about treating every exercise like practice and caring more about the form and technique. And then the second one is making it like your job to hit protein every day. Just, and, and, and that, because they work together and if you're doing this, if you're working out and you're lifting weights, but then we are very inconsistent with the protein, then you're not going to reap the, all the benefits from the lifting the weights. But if you practice lifting weights and you hit that protein, it's like you're going to reap all the benefits yeah. from the strength training. Yeah, and so do the protein, creatine, uh, what Adam said with the strength training. And then let's talk about your cardio. What does your cardio look like? Because you said you're doing that and you're consistent. What does that look like? Yeah, so every day I walk about two miles, oh, and that. that's either just outside or on the treadmill. Oh, I love, yeah, I love that. Keep it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you're okay. doing, yeah, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna really love how your body responds if you're consistent with this. It is gonna be transformative 
for you, Michelle. You're, you rep I, I had a lot of clients just like you. We're in the same kind of like uh, age group, and in mm -hmm. our generation, especially women, were they were uh, discouraged from strength training. They were discouraged even from yeah. eating animal sources of protein and fat and all that stuff. So just doing those things, you're gonna you're gonna notice like some really nice changes to your body. And it, it's not going to feel like you're forcing yourself. So it should feel like, wow, I feel good. Like, wow, this is my body's responding. I feel mm -hmm. great. I don't chase the intensity like you're trying to beat yourself up. That, that'll, that'll steer you in the wrong direction. So just start the program, practice the techniques. You can make it challenging, but the technique comes first. Make sure the skill is good and challenge yourself a little bit and you'll get stronger. You're going to get stronger week over week, especially because you're just getting started. Hit the protein. Go ahead and add another shake if you can't get it from food. Add another two or three shake. You can even add another two shakes if they're only twenty grams. Take the creatine. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna blow yourself away. Quick question: uh, The creatine is new to me. So is that powder? Is that you can or, or take pills. it in powder form? Le Le Legion Legion just came out with gummies. Yeah, or you can do it in gummy form. Oh, well, that's what you have. Right, okay. Yeah, so real easy, real easy to yeah. take. Tastes good. Uh, yeah. I'm a fan. We like Legion uh, because they're we know that they're quality. Uh, but creatine monohydrate. You don't want any other source. All the that's the one that's been studied over a thousand peer reviewed uh, studies. It's you know, there's all these other sources trying to tell you that there's different. You know, better there aren't no better. It's creatine monohydrate. It's what you want. Well, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We're, I'm excited it. for you, Michelle. Right. Do you have? I, I would love for you to follow up with us in like 30 to 60 days are after we, doing. Are this. we sending you starter? Do you have that program? I do not have it. Okay, no. well, let's send that to you, and then can I put? I want to. I want to follow up. I want to follow up on you yes. just to see this because this kind of this gets me really excited. Yeah. Can we put you on our forum, and then you just every 30 days or so check in with us? Let us know how it's going. I would love to. All yeah. Right. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. Happy All right, birthday. Michelle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You got yeah, it. You Thanks. Got this. Man, I hope she falls through. Those listen. I those hope are the kind of clients she radically change. That, oh life. yeah, she would hire me, and I, I would get a drastic shit. I would get so excited. It's like she's about to like it's gonna everything's gonna blow her mind. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna blow Especially her mind. If you had a bad experience, you know that it's, makes me so upset. Man. I know. I this really, is why I. I mean, that happened to a lot of people. I know, and I, I know. I and I know. Clients. I did that early on. I know I did that to to some clients early on where yeah, I gave them a bad experience, and it makes me really upset because uh, then they don't go back. She, you know, she is, is uh, I know that she has this like, I get my shit together, but the cool part about this is she is primed to see amazing results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An ex vegan, so probably grossly so, under eating yeah, protein forever, yeah. like that, not getting her body what she needs nutritionally. So switching out of that, already super yeah. positive. Never really done strength training. 20 years ago, had a bad experience and then ran away from it since then. Just a, a little bit of strength training paired with hitting protein and together, and she is going to completely yep. shift the way she looks and yep. feels. Right and away. and I, I'll tell you what, I've had vegans go on creatine. Everybody gets, most people get great, you know, results from creatine. Vegans, yeah. it's mind blowing. It is. They notice a huge difference, and, and there's studies that show IQ boost from it's it. It's a so. major boost. Yeah. Our next caller is Dana from Canada. Hi, Dana. Hello. What's happening? Hi there. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying how much I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. I've been listening for about two years, and after quoting you guys nonstop, my husband just decided to listen to the podcast instead. So now every week, I get a new package on my doorstep from one of your partners that he just has to try. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, who are these All guys right. she's talking about? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so do you want me to read my email? Yes, please. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, I'm a 31-year-old mom of two. I'm 5'6 and 127 pounds. I've been lifting weights for about 10 years, but with actual good programming for about two years. I've run anabolic performance and aesthetic, and I'm currently on phase two of power lift. I get between 12 to 15,000 steps daily, and I also do two five-minute sessions of mobility. Um, my sleep is good, eight to nine hours, and I consistently take creatine. My calories are 2,800 at maintenance, and I've been tracking for years. I always hit my protein goal of 150 grams and like quite easily, and my weight is stable. I'm getting a little stronger in the gym, mostly eating whole foods and maybe one protein shake a week, I, and I don't know my body fat percentage. My questions are, why am I still hungry? Do I need to bump my calories even more? And my second question is, I constantly hear a lot of women maintaining around 2,000 calories. 
why am I so much higher? And I'm not complaining at all. Yeah. Cause you're, we're, cause you're healthier. After we were reading everything, I'm like, what is she going to ask us? Yeah, She's I know. Ass. yeah, yeah. It's cause you're, it's cause you're very healthy. You got a very healthy metabolism and you're probably realizing that when you hit the weight, sometimes it's the body saying you could handle more calories. Yeah. You're, you're fit totally, as hell too. Yeah. You sent a picture in, you're very fit. You, you got good muscle. You're hungry because your body wants to build more muscle. Yep. So your body's like, hey, give us a little more food. Uh, go ahead, eat more, make it whole natural foods, protein centric again, and you're just going to get stronger. You're going to get even stronger. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're doing great. What are your calories at again? 2,800, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. That's yeah, awesome. you're fine. That's incredible. Yeah. You're, you're in a great place. No, there's nothing at all wrong with I uh, mean, with where, where you yeah, are at is there. where where we want to take most clients. When someone hires us and they're at, like you said, because it is very common that your female client comes in and says, oh, I only eat about 1,800, 2,000 calories and I want to lose a bunch of body fat and we got to reverse diet them and get them up somewhere healthy metabolically you're there. I mean, you're at an incredible place right now. And what you feel is exactly what Sal's saying is you're probably training very well. And when you stimulate it, the body's going, Ooh, we can handle more calories. I want to build more muscle. So if you want to build more muscle and would like to get stronger, that would be the answer. If you're happy where you're at, then, you know, it's, it's not, not, it's not uncommon to have times where you're a little bit lower than your maintenance how, and you're feeling hungry. How recent was it? The, the picture that you sent us? Um, that was June. Okay, so and you are you around the same as, as from that? Yeah, that? and um, I was eating um, about twenty five hundred in that picture. I went to twenty eight hundred in July, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't gain any weight. Yeah. And I did it. I did it gradually, about a hundred calories until I got to twenty eight hundred, yeah. yeah, yeah. and um, I Perfect. didn't gain any weight. And I actually think I look leaner. Yeah, you're yeah. probably yeah. that picture looked like. Maybe Doug, pull that up again. You look like you're in the in the more teens. Mu more lean oh, yeah, muscle. Yeah. yeah, you look like you're in the teens. Maybe seventeen percent. Uh, if you're if your sleep is good, libido is good. If you have a, a regular menstrual cycle, I mean, it, it, you're just. Yeah, you know, here's what I would advise someone like you. I would advise someone like you. If you're hungry, just eat whole natural foods. You're not going to go wrong. Let, let me let me ask this: are, How are you? How is your relationship with food? Are you? Um, do you feel like you're very obsessive with making sure you eat perfect? Do you allow yourself some flexibility to eat out of bounds, um, or does that freak you out? Like, how? How? Tell me a little bit about that. Um. So I will say we go out to eat probably once a week, okay. and um. I will track the whole day and then I'll just leave like a thousand calories. And I usually pick the cleanest thing on the menu. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that I eat a lot of junk ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm hesitant towards it. I prefer whole foods. Um, so I, I would say that I don't like junk. Well, that's what actually my husband would say. And I just prefer whole foods. I was going to say, so if, I, if you're not stressed out about it, yeah, you're, you're fine. That's all I was looking for. I was looking, because sometimes I'll get a client, they're obsessive about yeah. the, the food they're eating and it stresses them out if they eat out of bounds. And, and so that would be my only thing is maybe peering into that. But it sounds like you have a really good relationship with yeah. food. It sounds like you prefer whole foods. If, if you were my client, I would just say, oh, you're hungry? Eat more. Yeah. Eat another eat another whole food whole food uh, meal Option, and, you'll, and you'll be totally fine. I will, I will say I do use a food scale every day and I do track it. So... Okay. I mean, it might, so it might be a good exercise for you to not for a little while. Yeah, you try try a couple of days where you yeah, don't track. Yeah. You're in such a healthy place metabolically that I think as long as you know that you're getting protein centric yep. meals, strength training, you probably are going to maintain just fine and not have to do all that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the only exercise. If you're my client, we're trained, well, we've been together for a long time, and you look like you look and you feel the way you feel. I'd say, hey, let's go for a couple of weeks and uh, not not weigh and measure anything. Let's if, just see. If, and, if you want to, and are, I mean, how are you on vacation? Do you do do you stress out or are you just enjoy yourself uh i just eat healthy pro way more of course as we all do um i drink i eat you're fine it's yeah. not really a problem yeah you're totally fine yeah. you're killing it you're crushing it yeah. if you're hungry eat more you're, you're mm -hmm. gonna be told you'll, you'll just get stronger <laughs> yeah perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could give you something different to do, but you're doing great. No, no. I think it'd be good exercise to go for some time without tracking. That's about the only piece of advice I'd have. For we're you. nitpicking like, here. Yeah, and that literally is not because you have to. It's just a, I think it's a good exercise. I think it's good for us, especially if you know that you've been very consistent with tracking and measuring for a long time. 
I think it's a good exercise to move away from that a little bit and just see how you feel and try and listen to your body and see if you can still maintain that same feeling and healthiness. I think that's a good exercise for you to do. So you don't have, I don't, cause you're at a place right now where I, I don't think you even need to probably weigh, measure and track as much as you are. You've been, you've obviously proven you've been able to maintain a very healthy, fit, strong physique for, and be able to get away with eating, uh, mm -hmm. drinking and having fun and enjoy yourself. So you know, maybe pull back a little bit on the tracking and weighing and just kind of and Perfect. see how you feel for a month. Yep. Hit some PRs on powerlift. <laughs> so far, so good. Right on. <laughs> right on. Great. You're yeah. Thanks it. for calling in. You're killing it. Good job. Thank you so much. You got it. Bye. Bye. Well, I mean, I like, you know, every once in a while someone calling in like that because that is, um, I mean, that's possible. It's possible to get to that place and you live that way and, you know, she's tiny. She's eating almost 3,000 calories a day. Yeah. Um, you know, strength training feels good, strong. Uh, I mean, that's the, that's the place you want to, where you want to be. And I think she's overthinking it with the, why am I still hungry? Eat, feed yourself. When you're like that, feed yourself and you'll yeah, just the, end up getting more strong. Yeah, yeah. The only strength. thing I feel like I can peer into because other, I mean, you're looking at the, the pinnacle of what we want to take most of our female clients yeah. to get to, right? I mean, She's a, she's tiny, 127 pounds. Think about that for a second. She's a mom of two yeah. and she's eating 2,800, 2800 calories with abs, yeah. with abs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's so impressive. She leaner. Yeah. The, that high the only thing that I would probably challenge her on is the, uh, let's not track for a while. Cause, mm -hmm. cause may, I mean, maybe yeah, that can be like a handcuff, right? right? Maybe she's downplaying how obsessive she is about tracking. And that's about the, and again, here I am nitpicking. I didn't, this is not me critiquing at all. It's just trying to guess off of a five minute phone call um of where i could help her in her journey uh, other than that the, the she's kind of dialed and this is a place that i want to get all of my clients to to where they can have that much metabolic flexibility mm -hmm. feel that good mm -hmm. look that good um is in and, and and desire sounds like she doesn't desire junk, junk food she desires healthy food she chooses yeah, that mm -hmm. because she likes it not because she feels restricted not punishing herself no it's a, this yeah. is an incredible place to be all right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.